So let's have a look at the laws that Johannes Kepler managed to derive by looking at the data of the planetary motion. The first of his laws is that the orbit of a planet is an ellipse with the sun at one of the two foci. Now this was actually a pretty hard law to derive because the eccentricity of their orbits is actually very low. That means that they're very very close to being uh, a circle but they're not actually a circle so it's an ellipse which has been in a way almost squashed to resemble a circle however it is still very much an ellipse so this is why the statement about the orbits being circular the very start of this video was wrong because the orbit of a planet is an ellipse with the sun at one of the two foci now let's have a look at Kepler's second law. Okay, now Kepler's second law is quite specific, so I'd like to go into a little bit more detail. Imagine that you have a planet orbiting the, the sun. This is my artistic impression of the sun over here. And let's say that in one month, the planet goes from here to there. Let me draw the planet here as well. So this area that is being swept by this line segment is one month. So one month. If the planet is closer, it is moving quicker. The reason why it's moving quicker is because it experiences a greater gravitational force. Now if the planet is over here, so it goes all the way around and then comes back over here in one month like so it will have moved from here to there now kepler's second law says that this area a1 is equal to the area a2 in other words the wording of this law is that a line segment joining a planet and the sun sweeps out equal areas during equal intervals of time. In the exam you would normally be asked to support your statement with a, with a little diagram and uh, I think for your understanding of Kepler's second law it's really really important to keep that diagram in um, in mind in particular sweeping out equal areas in equal time intervals so that means that the area a1 is actually equal to the area a2 and both of these occur in equal time intervals now the time interval doesn't have to be a month i've just chosen this as a, as an example Okay, so hopefully this makes sense. A line segment joining a planet in the sun sweeps out equal areas during, in, during equal intervals of time. The implication of this law is that the planet will be moving quicker, faster, when it's closer in its orbit towards the sun. And this is why the first of our statements in our initial multiple choice question was actually correct, that the planets move quicker as they are approaching the, the sun. Okay, folks, so let's have a look at Kepler's third law. Kepler's third law is a mathematical statement. It says that the square of the orbital time period is proportional to the cube of its orbital distance. Now, the orbital time period is simply the time a planet takes to complete one orbit around, uh, around another object. And the square of that time is proportional to the, to the orbital distance. In practice, this means that the farther away a planet is from, from the Sun, the longer it will take to actually orbit the Sun. Uh, if this question appears in an exam paper, something which is really, really important, and I'm just going to underline this, is that you need to be quite specific and, and write down that the square of the orbital time period of a planet. Remember, 
uh, these laws, Kepler's laws, only apply for planets and other orbiting objects. So we need to be quite specific. They were initially derived for planets, for Mars in particular, so we need to mention that if this uh, appears on an exam paper. Okay, folks, so hopefully Kepler's laws now make sense. In my next video, I'm going to be deriving this mathematical statement. And uh, this is actually given in your formula sheet that the square of the orbital time period is proportional to the cube of its or orbital distance. The constant of proportionality 4 pi squared over gm is, um, is also given so we can directly apply that to problems. What we're going to do in the next video is derive this, uh, this mathematical statement. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video. If there are any questions, please feel free to leave a comment and I shall see you in the next video.